So let's talk about how to convert patients from promotions to paying full price. What I want to clarify here is that I'm going to talk to you about the strategy of dealing with promotional patients rather than the specifics. So I'm not going to be talking about rebooking strategies here. Um, the, those are things that we can use both with full price and with promotional patients. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is the difference between when you're trying to book somebody from promotions instead of your normal full price clients. And I'm going to assume therefore that you have greater than 50% rebooking rate for your normal client base. So that this means that five out of 10 people that would come to you for an initial appointment, you've got those baseline strategies for rebooking in place. If you don't, then all the promotion is gonna do is help exaggerate those issues that you have with rebooking. And if you're needing to find more information on that, you want to be looking specifically for rebooking tactics. Here, we're gonna talk about how to take promotional patients, so people that you've brought in, you threw some form of offer, some sort of workshop, you sort of brought them and tempted them into your practice and how to get those ones to paying full price, because obviously they weren't the ones that were hunting you out in the first place. So this is where we're going to focus on the differences with a promotional patient on how to convert those ones. All right. So first of all, we're going to cover ditching the Groupon mindset. Second of all, we're going to talk about this sort of formula or equation where we've got no versus any versus quality. Don't worry, I will clarify that when we get to it. And then finally, which is the key thing here, which is the short versus the long sell. And this, I'm gonna use some real clinic examples that we've done in our practice of how we've used these two principles to convert patients from promotions to paying full price. Very briefly, this is me, I'm Vicky Marsh, and I run a sports massage clinic in Cambridge, UK. I'm lucky enough that we now have a team of eight associates um, and I've built the whole practice up as a single mum so as a result I'm sort of heavily focused on strategies on trying to um, make sure that I can optimize my time in clinic and then using both off and online strategies to get clients because I wasn't necessarily able to afford to do the free appointment strategy or, or things like that so I found that I was able to grow my practice, but in order to then get associates on board and get them busy quickly, this is where we use promotions from there. And we very recently got a puppy um, and the puppy is going to focus later in the topic here for you. And I'll, um, you'll see why when we get there. Um, I then also run the Massage Therapist Business and Marketing Podcast. So I'm using the audio from this presentation for the podcast. So if you're listening to that, great. Make sure that you've subscribed. And if you're watching this as part of the presentation, then make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and that will give you weekly episodes on topics just like this. So let's jump into the full content now, ditching the group on mindset. So what would your immediate reaction be if I told you that using Groupon was the most effective way to grow your business? Now, most people have a really strong negative reaction to that. You know, seriously, um, you know, the amount of discount that you'd have to give with Groupon, like it's not possible to build a business with that. And I'd be like, okay, fair enough. But then the big question, which really underpins all this is, what type of patients are you going to attract or that you think you're going to attract from Groupon? Nightmare ones, right? We've all heard horror stories of people who run Groupon. Um, they've got the, the, the both Groupon themselves, maybe not managing stuff well, but in particular about the type of client that you attract. That would be attracting what we call tire kickers. So people who are just testing you out, you know, no intention of ever coming back. People who are always after some discount, and that as a result, these type of clients from Groupon would never pay you full price for an appointment, which therefore means that they, they, that patient group, are more trouble than they're worth. So this is all known as the Groupon mindset. That promotions don't work, that clients from promotions will never rebook, and you've got to be honest with yourself here, like, although on a logical basis, you know, that's not the case, 
you can sort of understand, I call them the, the middle of the night thoughts. So the ones when you're being completely honest with yourself, that if you kind of think, well, look, actually promotions don't work, you kind of turn your nose up to them, that like you said, that the type of people that you'd get through from Groupon would, would not rebook, that they'd never pay full price, and that as a result, promotions are more trouble than they're worth, then that exactly is the Groupon mindset. So I wanna ask you guys a quick question. Who listening to this, who watching this has br ever brought a group on in the past? There's gonna be a reasonable percentage of you, but then what I'm then gonna ask you is then, or that you've tried something as a first time offer. So you've done a product or service and you had an offer to entice you in. And that can be as simple as like two for one cocktails, um, 50 percent off in the supermarket um, you know perhaps the food's on the end of the aisle so it's that kind of prime location spot that you've um, done a deal to go to a restaurant you know there's loads of occasions where you probably would have used an offer or bought a group on right so are you a tire kicker always after a discount never would pay full price now, I know some of you are like, yeah, of course, that's definitely me. Of course, I want a discount. But the reality is, is that actually, you know, you're not more trouble than you're worth. Just because you're somebody who either used Groupon or took up an offer, that doesn't mean that you're not necessarily a quality client, right? And then the next key thing here is that I'm going to ask you this question. Have you ever gone on to pay full price for a product or service after using an offer? Have you ever done that initial trial of something you've seen on Facebook or a subscription box service or, um, you know, when you've had one month free of something and then pay full price for it? And I'll be amazed if the answer's not yes, right? Okay, because the whole point of it is that you have experienced it. And in most cases, the whole point is that you actually like it and that the offer has just tempted you in for a variety of reasons. So as a result, let's drop this group on mindset when it comes to promotions. It's not helping you to think of these patients and clients as troublemakers and more trouble than they're worth. And you are the sort of person that has in the past used offers and then gone on to pay full price. So these people that we're attracting are just like you. So let's drop that mindset so we're not creating a negative situation or environment, even if it's subconsciously in the treatment room. The next thing, once we sort of have gotten our head around this idea that promotions and, and clients from promotions could actually be really beneficial for you and your business, we then need to go onto this equation of no versus any versus quality, okay? So no patients or no clients, this is not a situation we want to be in. So any patients or clients are better than none. Now bear with me because there is the rest of this equation, okay? If let's just go back to having a no client scenario. So let's just say um, you um, had three slots available yesterday in your practice and you didn't fill them. They're now gone. You can't resell that time. It's not like a product where it sits on the shelf waiting for someone to come. It's gone. You cannot sell that service slot again now. So as a result, anybody that you have in is going to be better than nobody. And there's, there's a few reasons for this. I mean, one, financially, you actually got money coming in, which is good. But also, second, the, the energy that that creates by having, um, by having clients in a treatment room and therapists working on them is, is good, right? So when we expanded and got a new room, there was nothing worse than just knowing that that room was empty. So by doing a promotion, we were able to fill that room. The therapist and the team got excited about the possibility that, and what we had created by expanding. And in, even though most of them were discounts, that was still better than that treatment room just being empty. And certainly for my mental well-being, it was as well. Okay. So any clients is better than no clients, but quality clients are better than any. Okay. So we don't want a situation where there's none, but we do want to be looking always looking and always trying to create these quality clients, these quality patients. So the first step of going from no clients to any, that's what we call lead generation. So that's where we use both off and online strategies to take people from not hearing about us at all, not interested in our practice to then wanting to come along and engage with us. Taking them from any patient, so from being interested to our quality patient, that's the conversion that we're talking about here in this presentation, okay? 
so let's just briefly talk about who is a quality patient before we go forwards, right? So who is it that we're trying to create or look for? One is that they're prepared to pay full price, okay, which is really important. A quality client is someone who's prepared to pay full price. Two, they're willing to invest in a course of treatments. It's not quality if they just come for one once every three months, right? Somebody who's willing to invest in a course of treatments, if this is pain management, then it's blindingly obvious why we want that to be the case. But let's just say that you are in the spa industry or um, beautician kind of sector. Then again, we're going to want that because we want that client who is going to come on a monthly basis or who's going to continue to top up their sessions with you. A quality patient or client is that they know they have a problem so they understand that there's something that's troubling them. And the key thing is that they, they understand that you can provide the solution. So they're not looking elsewhere. They know when they've got this problem, you are the person to come to, right? So if we think about this, they're prepared to pay full price, invest in a course of treatments. They have a problem and they know and they trust that you can provide the solution. That's, that is the perfect ideal client we're looking for, right? That's what we would call a hot lead. So when we're talking in marketing terms, we describe it in temperature. So this is a hot lead. And we'll come back to this concept later. So when we look at, um, so let's just take this um, temperature kind of guide into our equation. So we've got no patients or any patients are better than no patients and quality patients are better than any. So no patients, that's a cold lead. That's someone who's never heard of you, they are not willing to pay full price, they don't necessarily know that they have a problem and they certainly don't know that you can provide the solution, that you can give them pain relief or relaxation, okay? That is a cold lead. A warm lead is somebody that ticks a few of those boxes. They've got more interest in you as a company. They may know that they have a problem but they're not quite sure whether you guys are gonna be the one to help them with it. And at this point, they're probably not in a situation where they're willing to invest full price and certainly not willing to commit to a course of treatments because they're just not confident yet whether you're going to provide the benefits that they need. And then the quality patients, that's that hot lead. These are people that know they have a problem. They're literally almost banging the door down, right? These are the ones that call you as soon as you open, use your online booking system, email you, and that they want to then get that booking. The key thing that's really important to take away here. So, and if you're listening to the podcast, you need to make a note of this because on the presentation it is in big, big letters. Just because they've come for an appointment doesn't mean they're a hot lead. It doesn't mean that they've made that decision that they want to invest in a course of treatments yet. Okay. So when we talk about this model of no versus any versus quality, we normally think about this idea that quality people are the ones who rock up for the appointments, but just because they are at the appointment does not mean that they are a hot lead. Okay. And again, I'm going to help explain this a bit more later. So if you feel like you're getting a bit lost, but it's really important to know that just because someone is even on your treatment couch, doesn't mean that they're at that top end level of what we would class as a quality patient. So someone who's going to invest a lot of time and money working with you. So once, once we've got this concept of the no versus any versus quality, then we can move on to the specific strategy of how you deal with your promotional clients. Okay. Because that's the key to converting patients from promotions to paying full price, which is why you're listening to this now. Okay. <clears throat> So what is the short versus long sell concept? Okay, short sell is when they, you get the rebooking or you rebook them directly from the promotional appointment. So they come in, they have the promotional appointment and then you rebook them. And I've been pretty generous here. So I was using this for the, the numbers of the ones that we've done. The second appointment needs to be in six weeks or less. And that's, that's quite a long time frame. In most cases for pain relief, we're looking at getting them in next week. And worst case scenario, if it's maintenance in four weeks or a month, right? So six weeks is a pretty generous time frame. Now, the key thing here, so this is what I've classed it as. What I find that you guys, when you're running promotions, tend to assume is that that second appointment, it needs to be a full price appointment within six weeks. Now, if I can get you doing that, that would be awesome, right? But 
getting that full price booking is dependent on either getting, so either that they've just walked in like it, or creating in the session a hot lead, so a quality client. So if we go back to thinking about that quality patient, they are prepared to pay full price. So if they walk in and they've come in on a promotion and they actually were prepared to, so let's just say they've been thinking about coming for a massage anyway, great, fantastic. You should be able to be in a situation where you can rebook them at full price within six weeks. Okay. But if they've come in and they just want to test it or someone's giving it to them as a gift, they're not necessarily going to want to pay full price within six weeks. So you're either going to have to create that in the session. And that's where learning about creating a brilliant patient experience. And like I said, some of these specific rebooking tactics are going to be really helpful, but a short sell, you're going to be very dependent on getting this hot lead. Now, for us as therapists, practitioners, running your own practice, it's normally all about this short sell. If yes, somebody comes in and we're trying to rebook them within this time frame, we are very, very lucky as an industry that we get these hot leads every day. So what I want you to consider is that just think about your normal practice at the moment. All of the new patients or clients you get are already hot leads they're already quality leads right because the people that contact you that walk into your practice they speak to your receptionist they call you they use your online booking system these ones are already prepared to pay full price they're already in most cases prepared to invest in a course of sessions with you they definitely have a problem because they've been on the hunt right they've been looking for someone and then they've come to you because they have an understanding you can provide the solution so for those of you that are listening podcast wise, this is literally the four criteria that we had for our quality patient that we were talking earlier on. So the, the normal people we deal with in our practice every single day are hot leads and they are, they are our quality patients. Okay. So with that in mind, we're biased. We assume that everybody who then crosses our threshold is going to pay full price when they rebook for that second appointment. Right. So when it comes to promotions, it, it's important to use your normal rebooking tactics. And there's things like the empathy, motivational interviewing, educating them about that perhaps their condition might take some time to work on and that you would be the expert to work with in creating a plan. But when we look at the numbers, if we just focus on this short sell, which is what we're used to, we're used to rebooking people in that time period, the numbers don't necessarily reflect this. So I'm going to talk you through what we did as a clinic and then demonstrate why there's this now short sell, which is what we normally do in, in clinic. And then this long sell strategy, which is what we need to do for promotional clients. So numbers wise, when we ran promotions in our clinic, we had three different strategies that we've done. Okay. These are with therapists who are either students so um, we, um, in the UK, if you're, if you're a student massage therapist, you need to get clinical hours. So we offer the opportunity to work with us as part of an internship, which allows them to then get a more professional experience when they're doing these clinical hours. But we did, we did these, all of these promotions, all of these numbers with therapists who are either students or they're up to about two years experience. So we're not talking a practitioner that's had 10 years experience of rebooking and should be amazing, okay? So point here is that these are probably the minimal numbers that we can expect. Um, you should be able to get more if we put in different strategies and I'll explain at the end lessons that we learned and recommendations that I have, but this should be a baseline. Okay. The strategies we did for promotions ranged from doing free appointments to doing actually doing Groupon and then Groupon style. So Groupon pricing for stuff to then 50% off. And for us, we found that just in general, when you run a promotion, the average rebooking rate from promotions, just in general, regardless of when they rebook, is 41%. Okay, now for us, that varied massively between 0%. We had some um, therapists not rebook at all from when we were doing some of these promotions to others who rebooked at 65%. So there's a big range here, and this is where you just working on your baseline rebooking strategies would help. But the average, just so that you've got a guide for what we've had with our experience now with a good number of therapists, is about 41% of people that come in from promotions will rebook. Okay. 
So of all of those rebookings, if we now just focus on how many were short sell rebookings, so how many people from promotions would rebook within six weeks? The answer was 58.5%, so 59% in less than six weeks. So if we just focused, if you just judged your promotions based on short sales, so whether you could rebook them within six weeks, um, we'd be pretty disappointed with those numbers. That's not great at all. So this, this guys, is where the long sell strategy comes in. Okay. The long sell is when you don't rebook them directly from the promotional appointment. They leave the room and there's no booking in the diary or there is a booking in the diary, but then they cancel it. So you don't have that confirmed appointment with them within six weeks. So their second appointment is with you, but in greater than six weeks. And I've left this really open ended. It can be any time after six weeks. Okay. Now that remember isn't a, isn't a quality client for us, is it? This isn't one of these people that's investing in a course of treatment, but it is somebody who counts as an any lead. They're any sort of client to help fill, but they're not a quality one. Okay. So 41 and a half percent. So let's just say 42% of your rebookings can come greater than six weeks after that first appointment. So I'll repeat that again, because that's really important. 42% of all your promotional rebookings can come greater than six weeks after the initial session with you, which for most of us, that's a long time out of our working memory, right? 20% of all the rebookings can come six months or more after the first appointment. 20% of rebookings from your promotions, if you handle it right, 10% of your rebookings can come greater than a year. So that the clients never come back, but they do come back in a year's time or more. 10%. 10%. Okay, so here, this is where hopefully that penny's starting to drop, the light bulb's starting to go on about this concept of the long sell. Okay. <clears throat> So this is where we need to shift the mindset because we are privileged that every single day you get quality patients and clients contacting you, hot leads contacting you. So it means that we are very lucky that we can focus on short sale. We can focus on, can I rebook them from this first appointment? Yes, no. But this is where we need to shift the mindset when we're dealing with promotional clients because they're not necessarily hot, they're warm. Okay, so I've brought the slide back up again for those that are listening on the podcast, which says just because they come for the appointment doesn't mean they're a hot lead. It, it means that they're a warm lead or more. That's all it means. Okay, so when they're not cold, they come into your practice, but it doesn't necessarily mean they hit that quality lead hot criteria. So how do we do the long sell then? How do we get... Uh, for that 42% of patients coming back more than six weeks after their first session. What do we need to do? Well, we need to convert them from a warm lead to a hot lead. So that's the fundamentals of it, which means we're taking them from any patient, so just a body that's filling the room for us, to the quality patients that we're looking to grow and build our practice. So to do a long sale, we're looking to educate and build rapport with them. And the key concept here, which is I was putting the presentation together, I didn't really realize until then I actually sort of did full circle and went through it, is that we need to leave the door open for them. These promotional patients, we need to leave the door open so that when they do hit all of those criteria, that we are the obvious business of choice for them to go to. Now, I just want to clarify as well, for those of you that are a bit more tech minded, Whenever you're thinking about your sales funnel, so whenever we're doing lead generation, if you remember right at the beginning, I was talking about taking people from no patients to any, so from cold to warm, we're talking about educating and building rapport with them. We're trying to uh, you know, give them a free lead magnet, so like three exercises to help back pain, and then send them an email series to then try and educate them about back pain and build rapport. This is exactly the same process for warming them up, okay? And it would be the same for a Facebook ad funnel for a lead magnet on your website. We are trying to warm these guys up, but instead of warming them from cold to warm, 
which is when they go from never hearing about you to coming for a promotional appointment, we're now just going to warm them up from going to a promotional appointment to then going to a quality hot lead where they're going to be prepared to pay full price to work with you. So the benefits are is that once we have had them in your practice, we can then use extra tools now to warm them up. So we've got things like email marketing, which is going to be the primary one, social media, but we have extra tools. So the, one of the things is to make sure you give them an amazing first appointment experience. If you're watching this as part of the series of presentations, this is now the set, this is the presentation that literally follows this, but this is about all of those three strategies to do with rebooking, creating great experiences, motivational interviewing is definitely something if you're interested in this to look into content marketing so that's continue through email and social media to educate them to give them relevant information pictures infographics all of the stuff that you originally would have done to get them into your practice anyway um <laughs> Honesty moment here, I am terrible at consistent content marketing. So all of these numbers are based on our social media presence, which of course we know that if you're not boosting posts or doing ads now, then people probably aren't seeing very much. And then with very, very, very low email marketing to them. So these numbers, if you are someone that is interested in content marketing, then I would definitely recommend that, um, that you use these strategies because you're going to get much better numbers than we did. Um, what we did focus on, though, is continuing to offer discount appointments, which, like I say, you may all get a reaction to that as soon as I say it, um, but continue to offer discount appointments. And we focused on leaving the door open for them. So those last two, continuing to offer discount appointments and leaving the door open is what most people tend to miss out on when they're considering this long sell approach. So with continuing to offer discount appointments, one of the, one of the examples of how we did that was that we did a Groupon style appointment. So typically in our area, massage for Groupon would be £19. So we then did email marketing to our list to people that had only ever come once for an appointment and we offered them the chance to come back again for 19 pounds. That worked extremely well. The other strategy that we have for offering discount appointments, but in a more effective way for us, is our low cost teaching clinic. So this is where we have our students coming in. So this is what I mentioned earlier. And we have 50% off the appointment price of that. 50% of all new patients rebook, so actually it's higher. So even though there's variability between our student interns, the overall rebooking rate is higher actually for having charged the promotional patients more. And 25% of all new patients go on to pay full price, which for us has meant that at the moment we've got sort of 17,000 pounds worth of revenue from this. And these are all people that wouldn't have come otherwise. They didn't come for a full price appointment and that we got them in through Facebook marketing campaigns. Um, we got them paying a 50% off rate, but structured it as this low cost clinic. And then we were then able to transition them. And like I say, 25% of those people were going to pay full price, but we still end up with then another 25% still continue to do low cost, which means we're still earning. And at some point they might go on to full price, but again, they are just in this warm category where they're not necessarily prepared to pay our standard fee. And it, it genuinely could be financial, but maybe they're not there yet with having a problem serious enough and they're not willing to commit, but we want to leave the door open so they can come and see us as and when. And then if, if they need it, that then we clearly are going to be their clinic of choice. So this is where we leave the door open. So for those listening on the podcast, I've now got a picture up here of what is a McDonald's napkin with um, lots of writing on it. And um, it is looking very torn and chewed. So when I got asked to put this presentation together, I was in the car. So I was on the phone to um, Tor Davies and uh, scribbling down some notes. Perfect. Well, what I've discovered is if you leave the door open, this is an aside, if you leave the door open and then add in a puppy, so there's now a very cute picture of the puppy up there, you end up with a very um, chewed up notes sheet for your presentation. Okay, so this is where the dog comes back in. But the key thing out of all the scribbles that are on there is this 
this phrase here, which is the clinical tipping point. Okay, and this is a really good phrase. The key is being ready for the clinical tipping point. This is when they have a problem. So this is when the, the person who came in for promotion has a problem and they understand you can provide the solution. So remember, they might have come in for a promotional session with you because they are curious and they are testing you out, but they're not necessarily um, having a problem. So a good example is let's just say someone's come in for gait analysis, so a running biomechanics type approach. Maybe that they've heard about it online or in blog posts or their friends have mentioned it. So they wanted to go along for you know a low cost way of trying that out. But they're like, yeah, that's really interesting. But I don't, I don't really have any problems at the moment. Brennan's going quite well. Um, no, thank you. I don't want to rebook for your services. But then let's just fast forward three months time, which actually is the average amount of time we're finding people take to rebook. Let's fast forward three months time. And then they do get an injury. And then they nurse it for a little bit and they realize it's not going away. When that thought pops into their mind, oh, maybe I should go see someone. Who do you think they're going to think about? They can think about you guys because they understand from that promotion where you did the gate analysis with them that you can provide the services. It's just that they didn't need them in the promotional appointment, but they do need it now. They've reached that clinical tipping point where they're ready to make a decision and you are the people to work with. And that's why it's a long sell because they weren't necessarily in that situation to start off with, but it doesn't mean that they're never going to buy. So with the long sell, I've got a current patient to give you an example of how long it can take. Two years ago, they had one low cost appointment. So this was with one of our student interns who then isn't with us anymore because we do an internship, so they sort of come and go. Two years ago, it was, in fact, it was 778 days ago. They've now had four treatments with me paying full price for quite an interesting condition, completely unrelated to why they came in in the first place. Um, and we've got a five star review from that as well. For having opened the door in the first place by allowing the option for them to book a low commitment with one of our students, they simply didn't need or didn't know that they needed help is another thing. So if we'd content marketed more then maybe they would have known coming sooner. But when they did have a problem and quite a unique problem, we were then the clinic of choice. We were positioned as experts, not just generalized sports massage. We were positioned as experts for them to deal with this unique problem. We've got great results. And then as a result, we've then got a five star review. So that's a quality patient there. But it took two years for that tipping point to come into place. So to summarize this whole strategy of how to convert patients from promotions to paying full price, one is to make sure you've lost the group on mindset. Two is to just understand and play around with this formula of no versus any versus quality. I think you can probably hear in the background, that's the dog barking away. She's in the garden, a bit disgruntled. I'm not playing with her. Um, and the final one is short versus long sell. Okay, so lessons that I learned through the process, one would be to improve the short sell. So all of these numbers are from promotions before we started coaching our team and working and training our team on rebooking. So this was, this was completely left to just their own base rebooking strategies. They had no advice, no guidance. I would not recommend that. If you're in a situation, I mean, I was very lucky that for some of our earlier ones, we did have a very experienced therapist come in who was very good at rebooking, but I've learned the hard way that you can't just assume your associates or your employees are going to be able to rebook. You have to train them. But these numbers that I'm showing you here are without training. Yeah. And remember that they were, some of them were with students. Okay. So this is sort of the basement level that you can get. You can get a lot more from this if you build up the, that short sell approach. Okay. The second one, of course, is that do any content marketing. So there's, there's all sorts of levels here and you could quite easily segment people that come in based on um, what their issues are, make sure you give them specific campaigns. But like I say, all we really did was send the basics of what is a fundamentally a newsletter to them, nothing too um, informative at all whatsoever. So anything you do, any blog post, anything like that is going to improve your rebooking rates from promotions. 
And then as I mentioned, we've got specific content marketing. So from the promotion that they came in on, you could then target a little email campaign just to give them information about that. And then maybe give them offers that are specific to that as well. So even if you're going to do say a group on style offer like we did to reactivate them if they've only ever come once, we could make sure that you write in that email. They came in with regard to a back pain assessment. You could then say, you know, come in for 19 pounds for your 60 minute sports massage you know which helps alleviate back pain improves your mobility help with sleep etc etc whereas if they came in for a running one then again here's your 19 pound appointment for your 60 minute sports massage um, to help you with recovery from those long runs to improve your ankle mobility um, and, and uh, improve endurance you know things like that but what i have learned is promotions are incredibly good at being able to grow quickly. So this time last year, I had one full associate in, and now we have a team of eight. So if you've got an associate, a key thing here, or, or an employee, but you've got to remember that if they wanted to run their own business, they probably would be already. So if they were as motivated as you are, then they probably would be running their own practice anyway. So one of the benefits of them working for you, although it's not 100% the, the case, but one of the benefits is that you help find them new clients, that you are more motivated in that than they are, because otherwise they would be doing that themselves. You do sometimes get those um, unicorn style ones where they are very motivated in getting new clients. They're very, very driven, but they just really don't want to do the finances or they don't want to do the marketing kind of side of stuff, but they're happy to go out, speak to people, rebook. But that's not that common in my experience. You tend to find people who are very good practitioners, but don't necessarily want to go out or aren't very good at promoting themselves and do tend to struggle on rebooking. And that's why they come to the safety, so to speak, of working at a practice somewhere. So those people you can help their business grow very, very quickly through promotions. And then, as I said, going back to the first point, make sure though that you are improving that short sale, that you're helping coach them and train them on how to rebook in that first appointment in a sort of ethical way that they feel happy with. So the key thing with all of this is to make sure you leave the door open. So if you want to see how this works and how we do this, then um, go to massagetherapistbusinessschool.com forward slash subscribe. Now at the moment of recording this, that will take you to just a lead page, which is then a standard page that you put up to try and get information. Um, you'll be able to subscribe to the podcast through there. And then if you scroll down, there'll be a what next section, which will allow you to try out one of the messenger bots, which is what I currently use in order to get patients in from promotions. So you'll be able to go through that and test that to experience for yourself how a bot actually works. Um, uh, I haven't done podcast episodes on this because there was a block on new pages being added and that's now been removed. Um, so um, I'll try and get an episode out in the next few weeks on messenger bots and how you can use that. I'd highly recommend have a play. Um, but if you want to then see how we use it um, and also then to get access to this presentation notes, if you listen to it podcast wise, so the other way around, if you're already on the podcast, then head to massagetherapistbusinessschool.com forward slash subscribe. And that will give you the, um, the um, uh, opportunity to put your email in to then get the presentation notes as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'd love to hear from you with your success stories with promotions. Please feel free to ask me questions. Um, so again, that's a good way to go through the messenger bot and then ask me a question about how to run promotions, what to do. When I spoke at COPA, there were some great questions on, you know, how do you um, pay your staff with this? How do you deal with um, your current clients? And then if they see offers, how do you manage that? I'm happy to answer all those questions. So I just want to wish you well in growing your practice, be confident, drop that group on mindset, get out there, warm them up, be confident and don't give up. It's a short versus long sell. Let's just learn how to long sell and we can grow your practice. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.